Okay, well, our project is the art of recapturing lost voices, helping an NGO find a sustainable way forward. Uh, I'll go through the background and then the team will go through the project on the ground and how we made a lasting impact in El Progreso, Honduras. Uh, we focused on street children because that's a prevalent issue throughout Latin America. Uh, street children are often homeless and although many of them are not and just come from lives, uh, homes filled with violence, abuse, drug use, things like that. Our community partner, Pro Nino, is a residential rehabilitation center for street children. This is a picture of Brian, a child who we worked with. Um, on the left is a picture of him on the street, and on the right is a picture of him having been at Pro Nino for about a month. Pro Nino divides the children uh, based on their levels of rehabilitation, uh, into different housing and they try to incorporate them into the public school system and for the older boys they teach them vo different vocational skills and workshops. One of the activities that they taught the children was art skills, specifically uh, jewelry making in addition to painting and other things like that. Art is used as a therapeutic tool to both serve as a means of creative expression in addition to teaching them fine motor skills, uh, things like focusing, setting a goal, and achieving it that they need to use. Um, in school, often the boys have never attended school before, so it's really helpful. So the previous art program was unsustainable for multiple reasons. There was a long-term volunteer who could only stay for a year, and then there were no plans to um, keep the program going after her departure. It was a very small program. Only about six kids could participate. There was not a plan for continued funding, support, things like that. So we decided to work with ProNino to create a new sustainable program. Um, we decided to use this picture to exemplify our realities on the ground because immediately upon arriving in Honduras after traveling since about 3 a.m., we were picked up by our volunteer coordinator. This is Kevin Sestra. Um, and we were carted up to ProNino and realized we had no beds that we would be having for the remainder of our time there. So these are our beds all in the truck. Um, and by taking them to the house, we recognized that they didn't fit in the door, so we proceeded to cut them in half. Um, so that was just an example of how many of our expectations completely changed upon um, immediately arriving there. Um, we quickly met with the director and the staff of Pro Nino. Um, and recognized that our vision of the program and their vision of the program was slightly different. Um, the director, Reginaldo Munoz, um, believed that we should be including different mediums such as um, miming, dance, theater, um, none of which we were uh, thinking that we would be including throughout the program. Um, another major concern of ours was that the previous art therapy program had a component that was based upon fundraising um, and based upon selling the artwork that the children had made um, and using that to make it sustainable. Um, naturally, we wanted to include that component, but wanted to not create this program to be profit-driven. Um, we wanted to separate that direct relationship between the creation of the artwork and the selling of the artwork and taking that away from the children and onto the organization. Um, this is the bottom, the old art room, um, the bottom two pictures. Um, it could only fit about three to five people maximum. Um, the above is the storage room that we would be renovating to create the new art room. This is the new art room um, after renovations. Um, this bottom cabinet that's pictured um, was created by the older boys of Pro Nino in their vocational school. Um, we also contracted them to install the lights and the fans in the room um, so they would be able to be getting practice from their vocational schooling. Um, the development of our program naturally became jewelry focused due to the large president of donated supplies as well as the staff's interest in the boys' skills that they already had from the previous art program. Um, the program um, also was creating a space that was personal and comfortable away from the chaos of being surrounded by 60 boys. Um, think Lord of the Flies is the best way we can be used to describe it. Um, and one of our biggest challenges was establishing ourselves as teachers, um, as well as organizing our schedules. Um, the boys 
since there is a wide variety of ages and a wide variety of um, coming into the program and how long they had been there, had very different schedules um, based upon schooling as well as chores and other obligations of Pro Nino. This is a picture of our group on local Honduran TV. Um, we were interviewed for local Honduran TV and we brought some of the boys to participate in an arts and um, jewelry making project so the community could see what um, we were doing at Pro Nino. Um, there are several indicators that we use to measure our success. Um, first, we completely renovated the room. It was previously a completely dead space and now um, has tables and chairs and is completely functional for art, um, art making. Um, the art classes were integrated into the daily schedule along with their chores and activities. We hired a new um, art teacher, or a art, art teacher, with the project funds that remain from our grants. And we, um, the art room also served as a way to increase the fundraising capacity of Pro Nino through um, different types of um, selling of the jewelry that we made. And first and foremost, the art room served as an outlet for um, the Pro Nino boys who had often gone through traumatic experiences. Um, so this was a ther the therapeutic aspect was very important to us. Um, the main limitation of our project continues to be sustainability. Um, right now, we're very fortunate to have outside funders who um, are donating to the room and to keep it up and running and um, the future of the art teacher in the art room. Um, but the, the issue for us is how do we fundraise without detracting from the boys' therapeutic art experiences because that is the primary goal of, of our project, but at the same time we want it to be a sustainable room and not um, be a burden on the Pro Nino organization. Um, in January, we made one of, of um, several return trips to Honduras and we were able to continue evaluating our project and measuring um, the success. We found that there were th um, weekly art classes held three times a week for the boys. Um, art teacher was exploring new mediums, which is very exciting for the boys who are continuing to um, build on their, their skills that they had so far learned. And um, an additional art room was actually created for an overflow of other types of mediums. So this indicates definitely a, a, a sustained interest in um, the art on the boys' behalf, as well as um, a continued enjoyment, which just shows that our project is continuing to have a lasting impact. So one of our major takeaways um, from our project is that the difference between short-term and long-term volunteers, we were there for six weeks, so they called us short long-term volunteers because they have a lot of groups that come down for just one week, which we were able to see as we were there, groups would come in and out, but we were also able to meet some long-term volunteers that have been working with Pro Nino for several years um, the main thing that we concluded from this and these observations was that while we had read, you know, the literature on service learning stresses length of engagement as really important, and we definitely recognize that as important as our perceptions and knowledge of the organization changed dramatically after being there for one week and after being there for one month. But at the same time, we realized that the quality of your prior preparation and the willingness to really immerse yourself in the culture was extremely important. Um, for the success of projects, we really found that our ability to, or our ability to develop deep relationships with the staff, um, even prior to, before w when we got there, um, was really key to our success. Um, so we also had a very interesting experience seeing kind of the internal workings of an NGO. While we were there during a pretty tumultuous period um, for Pro Nino, and we were kind of functioning as neutral observers, just looking in. Um, there are some tensions in the organization due to unclear definition of responsibilities and power between different stakeholders. So while we're there, our, basically who we called our boss, our volunteer coordinator, quit um, during the fourth week that we were there due to um, extreme tensions between him and the director of the entire um, organization. And so that kind of put us, luckily we had developed very good relationships with the director and with the staff at Pro Nino that enabled us to continue doing our project with no hindrance to us, despite the fact that our main contact had quit. Um, so this was just kind of an interesting situation to be in the middle of. We actually were also interviewed by um, the board members who kind of wanted to get our take on what was going on, because we were just kind of there observing. So our project has really been one of continued engagement. As we've previously mentioned, we've had the opportunity to return three times. Um, and throughout these return trips, it's really been a focus on developing the project, making sure that we address the new needs that come about um, 
with as relating to the project and for Pro Nino to help, especially with the fundraising aspect. So our most recent endeavor has been to bring back some of the jewelry that the kids have been making and attempting to sell it here in the United States, then bringing down supplies and sending money for the salary of the art teacher. Um, Professor Swap's class this fall actually had a group of students who were interested in evaluating our project and in contacting one of our main site contacts on the ground, Ana Julia, this is something that she mentioned with regard to the project. She said that the work was like therapy for the kids. It taught them order, rules, and dedication to attain their goals. Um, so our project with JPC may be over, but our continued engagement with the project um, is certainly not over. I think that it's clear that our group is really dedicated to Pro Nino, and it's difficult for us to not imagine going back in the future. <laughs>